Okay, I'm continuing my Atwood machine series. And so let me just, uh, I don't know what this one's called. I'm calling it the inclined half Atwood. Uh, let me just show you the other two situations I've done. I've So far I've done this one, which is just a normal Atwood machine. It has two masses over a massless pulley. The half Atwood machine has a mass on a frictionless table and then a mass hanging over the table on a pulley. Frictionless, massless pulley. Uh, so now it's the same thing, except the table's not flat. So we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to we're going to number one say the tension, the magnitude, of the tension on the two uh, masses is the same. The magnitude, and then the magnitude of the acceleration is the same. And so why? Well, the tension's the same because it's the same rope. And if it had the mat, the rope has no mass which, yes, that's an approximation, then uh, the, the tension pulling one side has to be equal to the tension pulling the other side. So the tension is the same. Now, if the, mat, if the rope doesn't stretch and this moves a, a centimeter this way, this one have to move a centimeter down in the same amount of time so it has the same velocity and you use the same idea to have the same acceleration. So the magnitude of this acceleration is the magnitude of that acceleration. Now, this one's pretty tough because I'm going to have two different coordinate systems. So let me go ahead. When we have... I don't even know which mass is going to be greater right now. Let's just do this generic because I can't even remember which way this is going to accelerate. Um, but when I have a mass on an incline like this and it's going to accelerate, I need, I don't need, I want, I want to have the acceleration in the direction of one of the axes like this. So I'm going to call this the positive x direction and that the y. Why do I do that? Because that way I can have the net force in one direction, zero, and the net force in the other direction equal to the magnitude of the acceleration. If I don't do that, I can get two acceleration components, and then I'd have to find the total, and that's just awkward. Over here, I'm going to call this, I'm going to have a different coordinate system. Why? I just, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, so I'm going to start with this, di this uh, one right here. I'm going to draw, here's my x-axis. Here's my y, and there's my mass. And so what force are acting on that? Well, I have the downward pulling gravitational force, M2g. Then I have the upward normal force, N. And then I have the tension, T, like that. And that's all the forces I have. OK, so um, a little geometry trick here. Uh, I've done this many times, but if this is a, if that angle is theta, that's a right angle, that's theta sub c, the complement of theta. So if I then have this right here, that's another right triangle, that's theta sub c, that's a right angle, so that's theta. That's the complement of theta. So this angle right here is theta. Now, I could write the net force in the y direction. This is the y direction, but it doesn't really do anything, right? It doesn't do anything because um, I don't care about the normal force. I will later, but right now I don't. So I'm going to write this one as F net x equals, and I'm going to say this one's accelerating this way with the value a, and this is accelerating this way with the value a. So the net force is equal to M2a. Uh, and now what force are acting in the x direction? Well, I have the tension, so I have T minus this component of the weight, that part. So if that's M2G, this is M2G sine theta in the negative x direction. So it's going to be negative M2G sine theta equals M2A. So that's my um, equation for mass 2. Now let's go and look at mass 1. Here's that. I have M1g and the tension. And I don't know which of those is greater because I don't know which way it's going to accelerate. So I'm just assuming it's accelerating down, but I don't really know that. Okay, and we'll, we'll find that out later. So if I write F net y equals M1 negative M1a, I'm assuming it's accelerating down, then I get uh, T minus M1G equals negative M1A. So I have two equations, two unknowns. 
and I need to solve. So let's substitute, let's solve this one for t and substitute it in up there. So if I use that, I get t, I'm going to add m1g to both sides. I get t equals uh, m1 minus, no. I get t times uh, t equals g, I'm going to add m1g to both sides, minus a times m1. Yeah, so I add m1g to both sides, I get negative m1a plus m1g, so I can factor out the m1 like that. And now I can substitute this in up here, and I get g minus a m1, that's that, t, and then I get minus m2g sine theta equals m2a. I want to get all the, I shouldn't have done that. I've made things more complicated. Okay, so let's write this as uh, m1g minus m1a minus m2g sine. You make mistakes sometimes and you just gotta move on. I mean, there's nothing you can do about it, right? I made a poor choice and I have to, I have to I'm responsible for my choices. Okay, so now I can get all the a terms on the other side. I'm gonna add this to the other side and I'm gonna write it over here. So I get m1 plus m2a, right? When I add that to the other side, I get that. And then I have this other stuff. So I get m1g minus m2g sine theta. Now I can divide both sides by m1 plus m2 and I get a equals m1g minus m2g sine theta, all of that over m1 plus m2, and that's my acceleration. Okay, now I've been using this is 100 grams, and this is 50 grams, and we can put in our values here, so let's do that. I'm gonna put in, uh, oh, I need to pick an angle. Let's pick uh, theta equals 60. Okay, I'm gonna not write down the numbers, I'm just gonna do it, because I like to live dangerous. I too like to live dangerously. So M1 is gonna be 100, so 0.1, enter, 9.8 times, now I need to do this, M2 was 50, 0.05, enter, 9.8 times, and then I had sine of 60. So 60 sine times. And all of that I need to subtract, and I get that. Now I need to do this, M1 plus M2 is just 0.15 divided by, and I get 3.7 meters per second squared. And that's the magnitude, so I assumed it accelerated down, and it does. Okay, now let's think about this. Uh, what if, what if theta equals 90? What would that look like? That would look like a triangle like this. That's my Atwood machine, which I already solved. So if I put theta equals 90, the sine of 90 is 1. So I would get uh, m1 minus m2g on the top. And I think that is my solution for the Atwood machine. I, here it is. I do have it. Yeah. I get the same thing. That's cool. Okay. Now what if theta equals zero? Then that comes down and I get the half Atwood machine. So if, if sine of zero is zero, so I just get m1g over m1 plus m2, and that's what I had for that. So that's good. So, I mean, you could do other checks. We could check the units. Does this have units of acceleration? Yes, because there's mass times acceleration, mass times acceleration, no units divided by mass, so that works too. So everything works. I'm pretty happy. I don't even really need to test it. I mean, I think the one thing to consider is when would this accelerate down? What would have to happen to accelerate down? So in order for this to be negative, this term has to be greater than that. So I could say m2g sine theta is greater than m1g. So the g's cancel, that doesn't matter. So you could either have, I could either pick a 
larger angle theta or I could pick a larger mass m, but it's not, you can't just say one value is going to do it. Okay, you can pick a value for theta and calculate the mass or pick a mass and pick the theta. And there you go. Okay, that's the inclined half Atwood machine. I'm going to do some more Atwood machine problems. Uh, they're going to get fun. We're going to do things like friction. We're going to do things like a non-massless pulley. I may even do a non-massless rope uh, because I'm just going Atwood crazy like you wouldn't believe. Talk to you guys later.